So we now have a completed sound cue, and now we just need to get it playing back on our level. However, before we do that, I want to talk to you briefly about sound classes. Sound classes are the way in which you define how the engine is going to handle your sound cue. Basically, it's a set of internal rules that control which sounds take priority over other sounds, etc. and so forth. Setting the sound class for your sound cue is very easy. You just need to right-click, and you'll see sound classes currently set to master, and you have several different types of uh, sound class. You have sound effects types, uh, we have music types. If you're actually creating music, you can choose game music, option music, or user music. And then finally, you have voice. Now, what we're going to do is go under sound effects and choose ambient. Partially because this is an ambient sound, but also this has another important factor as well. This means that our sound cue will later be compatible with ambient zones, which allow us to cause a sound to become muffled as we go from one area to the next. And that's something we're going to take a look at a little bit later. If you do not set a sound cue to the ambient sound class, it will not work with ambient zones. And don't worry, I'll remind you of that when we uh, come back around to it. Now, how do we get this sound to play? Well, one way is we could use Kismet, which I'm not actually going to demonstrate, but earlier on when we set up our sample level, we set up a system by which our uh, trigger could open up our door, and as the door opens, we're playing back sounds. So. Very, very straightforward. It really only requires that you come up with some sort of event to trigger the sound. It could even be just when the level loads and is playable. And then you just go to right, you right click, choose new action, sound, and grab a play sound. You can plug your sound cue right in and that would work. What we're going to do instead is bring in a sound actor to control playback. It's a positional object we can actually place somewhere in the level. So let's do that. I've got my sound cue selected. Let's close the content browser. I'm going to right click here on the floor and choose Add Actor. Now you see several different types of sound actor, but only two of them will work with sound cues. They are ambient sound and ambient sound movable. Essentially, they're the same. The movable one can be moved. That's really all there is to it. You could attach it to a mover or to a rigid body or anything like that, and you can move that object around. A regular ambient sound does not move by nature. So let's go ahead and just use a regular ambient sound, and we can pick this up out of the floor, and there it is. It's a little icon of a speaker with some like a little sound wave coming out of it, which is so cool. Now, if we switch over to real time here in our viewport, we can start to hear our sound. Now, a quick note. Earlier on when we were talking about the sound cue editor, I showed you the attenuation node, which allows you to attenuate your sound so that it gets fainter as you move away from it. Let me go ahead and switch that off. It also allows you to spatialize your sound and position it in 3D space. If we had used one of those nodes in the sound cue editor for our sound effect, then we would also see a gigantic sphere of effect that would reach all the way around our level. That sphere of effect controls how your sound fall off looks. Now, we can demonstrate that if we grab any of the sound cues that have uh, some sort of spatialization. In fact, we could probably just create one. Here's our little random number cue. If I right click and edit this using the sound cue editor, this has attenuation already. So we could just place this the same way we placed the other one. I'm just going to right click and create a new ambient sound. And check it out. You can see a couple of spheres surrounding this actor. So there's an orange sphere. In fact, just to make things a little bit easier to see, what I'm going to do is pop over to wireframe mode, and then I'm going to move this actor completely away from the level. Now I'm holding down shift as I move, by the way, so I'm moving the camera along with the object. And what we see are two spheres. Within the inner sphere, that's our, our radius min, we have full volume. As we pass out of that inner sphere and move toward the surface of the outer sphere, our volume is falling off, and outside this very, very large sphere, we would not be able to hear the sound effect at all. So that's how that works. Now, we don't really need this sound effect in our level. In fact, right now, I don't even think it would affect our level. It's so far away. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. Now, let's fly back over here to our level, and we'll switch back over to lit mode. Okay, so now we've placed this uh, sound in our level. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test by choosing play and level. And we can hear it. 
And again, because it's not spatialized, you know, we didn't see any of those radii coming off of the actor, this sound seems to come from everywhere. It'll never get quieter depending on our position. You won't hear it track from speaker left to speaker right. It's just always going to be constant in both speakers or all speakers at the same time. So that is a quick look on how to place a sound cue in your level. Be sure to save your level and save your package, and that will wrap things up for this video. This is, this is, this is, this is.